you want to venture out and try contour, this really chisels out your features. We always say contour for the cheeks is like a push-up bra for your cheeks, you know, because you're adding lift to your face, which is um, something that makes you feel young and youthful again. And um, it makes you feel a little bit more confident in the world, right? Hey there, I'm Amy Connell. Welcome to Graced Health, the podcast for women who want simple and grace-filled ways to take care of themselves and enjoy a little chocolate as well. I'm a certified personal trainer and nutrition coach who wants you to know your eating, movement, and body don't have to be perfect. You just need to be able to do what you're called to do. Okay, so the way that I structure this show is I tend to try and have a variety of topics. I will focus on physical health, I will focus on spiritual health, and mental health, sometimes nutritional health, which I know is part of physical health. And on the months where we have more than four episodes, I like to do something just a little different lighten it up a little bit. Sometimes we can have a little bit heavier conversations and I'm so grateful for those, but I like to do something just a little lighter and funner. And that is what this episode is. We are talking about makeup over 40. Now, I do not consider myself to be someone who is highly interested in makeup, and I have friends who can attest to this. For me, it's a means to an end. And if you follow me on the socials, you know I am not afraid of showing my face without makeup. But as my skin has aged, I found I appreciate the value it brings when I do want to look like I'm put together. And ironically, I now feel like I need more makeup to get that no makeup look. If any of that resonates with you, I know you're going to appreciate today's conversation with professional makeup artist, Stephanie Leonard. Stephanie is a mother of twin redheaded boys and a daughter who's approaching her teens. In the midst of all the organized chaos, Stephanie loves to spend her free time exploring her creativity in the beauty industry and as a professional makeup artist and stylist. Stephanie is a true believer that the purpose of wearing makeup is to only enhance her clients' natural beauty and not cover it up. She brings all kinds of just really applicable tips tips and tricks uh, just in her little makeup bag because what I did what did was I went through and thought about all of the just issues that I'm having with my own skin as I get older and how to deal with that with makeup and then I asked her how to do it. So yeah, basically it was a little p- personal consultation. <laughs> And I'm really glad. And I think you're going to learn a lot too. Now, before we get to Stephanie, I want to remind you of two things. One is the resources page over at gracedhealth.com. Whether you're looking for support in your faith, your food, your fitness, I have all kinds of resources over there to help you. Also, if you have not yet, I would love for you to sign up to receive notification of when my new book launches called Your Worthy Body. You can do that at yourworthybody.com. And when you do, I'll send you a printable 14 day health and body image devotional, my family's favorite breakfast recipes and a five minute wake up and warm up movement set designed to just to gently wake you up while you're still in your pajamas. This is something that I do enjoy doing. I've gotten lots of great feedback with and it's just a little precursor to the many, many resources I have in the book, including three full workouts, and a um, five minute warm up, a five minute cool down. I have recipes, I have devotionals, I have journals, it's all kind of stuff. It is, I don't know why I decided to do this big on my first book, but I did. Anyway, okay, let's have some fun and bring on Stephanie. Stephanie, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, Amy. I'm so excited to be here. Typically on the um, on the podcast, I focus a little bit more under the health umbrella. But uh, on those months where we have five weeks, I just decided I want to do things just kind of fun, just have a little bit of fun. Because as much as my me and my community are focused on the health aspects, we also just kind of want to look good sometimes and we want to feel good about how we look. And you know, not taking it too far down, um, down a path, but I'm really excited to have you here. Um, I am going to, I want to ask a couple questions in a, in a second, but I do want to let 
uh, the community and the viewers know if they're watching on YouTube, how we met. And uh, you had done some makeup for a girlfriend of mine who just got remarried. And I didn't know this part. She and I met for dinner a, a couple months ago. And I said, your skin looks amazing. And she said, well, one, I'm really happy, which of course makes a big difference. And she said, I think it's the makeup I've been using. I've been kind of changing some things up. I said, well, tell me more. So she put me in touch with you and you've been helping me a little bit on my makeup. So I'm a little self-conscious about how how I look right now (laughs) because I want to make sure that you think it's good, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. (laughs) But one of the things that she did was she sent me to your Facebook page uh, or your Facebook group, and I was blown away. I mean, you are a true professional makeup artist. Like you create art. I mean, not, we're not even talking about just the things that we're going to talk about today. Like you do some pretty incredible things. I mean, it really is. It's true art on your face. And we'll put that link in the, in the show notes so people can go check that out. But I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about your story and what drew you to this profession. Yes, absolutely. Uh, But first of all, let me just touch on this. I am so grateful that um, your friend has connected us. You were just such a joy. um, And I'm really excited to be here. And I think your makeup looks amazing. So (laughs) I'm very impressed with how uh, you accomplished your look today. Um, So my journey with makeup Honestly, I feel like makeup has always been a passion. I've always loved makeup, but I never knew I would have a career in makeup. And it's really an interesting story how I stumbled upon this passion and turned it into a career. I was a stay-at-home mom with, you know, three of my kiddos. My daughter was in grade school and then I had twin boys. Um, with my twins, um, they started showing some milestone delays and we went through some genetic testing and we had discovered that they had a a rare genetic disease. So with that said, I realized one day that, you know, I had put myself and, uh, on the back burner and because, you know, as moms, that's what we do. We put our kids first and I realized that six years of their life and my life was just dedicated and devoted to finding an answer and then finding ways to help them. So one day I decided when they started grade school that it was my turn to do something that was an escape route, was a healthy one that helped me find myself again. And so I um, stumbled a, a upon this makeup company and product. And um, I fell in love with the product instantly. And then, you know, I started journeying through um, putting that product on other women's faces. And what I found out along the way was these women were falling in love and finding themselves again. Uh, Just by a simple application of makeup being applied to them, I can't tell you how many ladies would um, you know, shed some tears or of joy um, and felt beautiful again. We all tend to lose ourselves along the way sometimes in life. And as I was finding myself again and helping myself in this therapeutic route of makeup, I was uh, recognizing that I was helping others too. And that's just uh, how I stumbled upon, um, you know, just discovering that my love and passion for makeup wasn't just for putting it on myself, but it was really putting it on other people. And uh, so many doors have opened up from that. I really resonate with that. You know, it's funny as I have been transitioning from being a group fitness leader for, I think I was six for 16 years now and to more of the personal training when I have clients who are, you know, walking in, a lot of times they're like late thirties, early forties, fifties. And the thing that I hear most from them is I've been taking care of everybody else. I've been taking care of my job. I've been taking care of my kids, my spouse. Uh, I've been taking care of my, you know, my kids PTO. I mean, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And they said, I just want to take care of myself. So I, you know, even though it's, it's a different product that you and I are, um, are trying to help people with, it's the same message where there's, we have given so much and just getting to that point where we, we kind of want to focus on ourselves a little bit. So yeah, I, I totally resonate, totally resonate with that. Okay. So for people listening, I really, I'm wanting them to go check you out because 
you're just gorgeous. I mean, you're beautiful. Your makeup is amazing. (laughs) And um, so anyway, that's a side note, but I, this is my story. I remember looking at a magazine. um, I gosh, I was probably 25 years old. And because I I used to get a bunch of magazines and there was like this headline on it. And the headline said, you know, full makeup in less than five minutes. And no kidding, Stephanie, I looked at that and I thought it takes people longer than five minutes to do their makeup. I always do my makeup in less than five minutes. I mean, it was so minimal. And I've always, you know, I, I grew up with a mom who was like, you can just never go wrong with a little bit of blush and a little bit of lipstick and a little bit of mascara. Like, and she never <laughs> left and still never leaves the house without makeup on. And I think I kind of swung the other way. And I've just never really been into that. Well, as I've gotten older, you know, my skin is changing my, uh, you know, just things change. And I'm, I've, I'm in this point where I feel like I've, I, I've been feeling like I have to wear more makeup to get that no makeup look. And I was wondering if you could kind of help walk us through this process because not everybody wants to look like they have a lot of makeup on. Um, but we all want to look put together, I think, or there, you know, there's just that, that commonality of feeling good in what we've got on our face. And particularly now with, with so many zoom videos and all of that kind of stuff. So I was wondering if we could walk through, I, this is how I want to approach this. If we could walk through some of the specific challenges that women over 40 are facing in with regard to their makeup. And then if you could kind of give us an overall picture, um, throw the mic back to you of things that uh, we can be focusing on. uh, And if we didn't cover something, does that sound, does that sound good? That sounds amazing. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's start. This is in no particular order. Well, the order yeah. is the order that th- the things that bother me. <laughs> so let's talk about, okay, we're getting older. We're a lot of us are getting these hooded eyelids and they're drooping down. So what do, what do we do about that? Okay. So first of all, as we get older and we age, our skin is changing, right? It's uh, less gravity and um, more uh, sunspots or uh, splotchiness. So um, I think that's why we all tend to want to put more makeup on to achieve a no makeup look because we're trying to cover, right? Well, with hooded eyes, um, if we're losing If our eyes are sinking or if we have the sunken in eyes and droopy eyelids, um, there are some tricks that you can apply to your routine that are super simple and easy that will correct that challenge that you uh, want to combat. So uh, my trick to you is, or anyone who's listening, if you have hooded eyes, what a hooded eye is, first of all, if you're not even sure what that is, let's start there. It's when you open your eyes and you feel like your eyeshadow is lost and you don't see it anymore. It like disappears. So that's one test you can do at home to see if you have a hooded eye. So what I recommend is picking a transition color of eyeshadow shades that um, would really brighten and open your eye. So this isn't something that's a really dark color. It's not anything that's a bold color. It's more of a warm earth tone um, that will just complement your eye color and brighten the eye. What you want to do with that, that one shade, is um, concentrate it in the crease area um, from outer eye to inner eye, um, and then open your eye and apply that color with your eye open. So this shade, um, when you apply the color with your eye open, you're guaranteeing that when your eyes open, you're going to see it. So um, that is one easy trick. You're opening your eye as you're applying it. And you're also using a color that is going to create um, a brighter eye, bigger eye, um, a less lost eye. <laughs> okay. So if that, if that's something that people are concerned about, maybe like the whole big smoky look isn't something that they would want to do. Is that Would that be a true statement? 
Um, honestly, you can create a smoky eye um, with hooded eyes. The only uh, recommendation that I would steer clear from is using too dark of a shade and bringing that darker shade from the outer eye all the way in. You want to concentrate the, uh, the darker shade only on the outer part of the eye. That way it opens the eye a bit more. And that transitional color that is more of the earth tone that's going to brighten the eye is the, the main color. And then you fade in with the dark from the outer eye towards the inner part of the eye, just a little. Um, that is a controlled smoky eye. I recommend using earth tones too. Nothing like blacks and grays and purples for your smoky eye, especially for women over 40. Um, yeah. You could use the warm browns and uh, rust tones. I think those are always really complimenting on, on women our age. Okay. Okay. All right. Good to know. So no, sm- no purples. <laughs> <laughs> If, if you don't, if you want to have the no makeup look. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about my personal favorite, eye bags. Um, you know, and I understand too, because, you know, it is, it is gravity pulling down the little pockets of fat that we have, and we all have them. And it just a lot of it. I mean, I have asked every time I go see my dermatologist for my annual skin check, I'm like, tell me about these. She goes, Amy, they're just genetic. There's not a lot you can do about it. So yeah, this is something that has been, oh man, I mean, really challenging for me to manage. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Okay. So, um, another easy fix is just, um, everyone's skin is different. Everyone's skin tone is different. Everyone's under eye bags pull a different tone. So really understanding and analyzing your skin, um, is a great place to start. And then, um, you know, discussing it with someone in, like a makeup consultation or an artist, um, that, that can guide you on the best way to camouflage and combat those problematic areas is, um, uh, the best way you can, um, incorporate that into your makeup routine, uh, com- confidently, you know? So I recommend, um, if you have blues and purples, you really want to choose a concealer that is going to combat the blues and purples, maybe an orange, uh, or a peachy tone and spot treat those tones with very little minimal product and then go over it with your all over foundation. I think a lot of women, what they tend to do is put a ton of concealer on underneath because they feel like they need to cover all of the pro, uh, all of the under eye with a concealer when it's really not necessary. It's only necessary to focus on um, concealing the target area of the eye if that's where your problem's at. Um, that way you're less is more. You're using minimal products, but each product serves a purpose. The visual that I'm getting is like, don't create like a big clown of, you know, all the way around, just kind of focus on those little, on the, on the small areas and then just do the all over foundation. Right. And to add to that, Amy, um, also, uh, after you spot treat and then use your foundation, it's always another fun step. Even women our age, um, in a controlled amount and, um, is the brightening effect, um, under the eyes. I think a lot of women make the mistake of, like you said, just applying that shade as like the clown shape under the eye. And, um, the only thing that that will do is enhance your under eye wrinkle or under eye bags. So what you really want to do is pick a shade or two lighter than your foundation, nothing lighter than that, or it will, um, make your skin look more aged under the eye and um, apply that in more of a pie piece shape instead of a a rounded out shape. So when I say pie piece, um, it's more um, from like the inner part of the eye down towards like the sides of the nose up to about the apple of the cheek and then up towards the top of the ear. So it's making a triangle that's bringing more light to the center of the face versus just directly under the eye. Oh, yeah. it's a fun so trick. Much. One of this my favorite is, steps. Yeah, <laughs> I can't wait till I reapply yeah. things tomorrow and try that. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so talk to me. You know, our skin is changing, and boy, I think the hormones are kicking in, and they're doing all kinds of wonky things, and we're getting um, splotchy skin. We're getting red skin. You know, and and just a less, um, less of a kind of a, a clean. 
palette, uh, you know, of a face than, than we used to. What kind of tricks do you have in your bag for that? <laughs> okay. So it still um, is about uh, along the same lines as spot treating under the eye. Again, instead of applying, you know, concealers and a bunch of different shades all over your face just to correct your color and then a bunch of foundation and powder and packing on product at over product, over product, really concentrate on the areas of your face um, that are sticking out like a sore thumb or that are hard on your eyes or that um, you really want to correct. Um, And then spot treat those with minimal uh, product because it really shouldn't take a lot of product to, to achieve the goal. So if it is taking you tons of product to achieve that coverage for a tiny spot, then it's probably not the right product. Okay. (laughs) I definitely recommend spot treat those. Um, One thing I love about uh, the product that I use, have used personally and professionally for almost four years now, um, is that our foundation shades are designed to not only, you know, match our skin tone and give us um, a flawless coverage, but it's also meant to, it's designed to uh, combat redness and has specific undertones that will um, help even out skin tone. Um, I think a lot of women are because, you know, this is how we've been born and raised in the makeup industry. Um, we go and we buy a bottle of foundation that's one shade, and we tend to think that that is going to match our skin tone. But what I think a lot of women do not realize is that our faces have multiple tones. Um, we have light areas, we have red areas, we have dark spots. So you cannot expect one bottle of foundation to achieve the perfect coverage on a bunch of multiple different tones. Um, So the makeup that I swear by and I love uh, so much is um, designed to really um, target different areas and work as a team to achieve a flawless coverage. Yeah. And I wanted, I definitely want to get into um, those products here in a minute once I, once we get through the rest of my list, because um, been using them and yeah, I really appreciate all the things that you've been saying. I mean, it's, it's a totally different process for me, but I've been, right. I've been really happy with it and it doesn't take me as long as it used to anymore <laughs> to, to get my makeup on in the morning. Okay. Um, so talk to me about, you know, we're all, I shouldn't say we all, but a lot of us are getting kind of wrinkly, uh, varying depending on where your genetics lies, you know, sometimes it's around the eyes or sometimes it's on the forehead or, uh, you know, the little marionettes or something like that. Do you have any recommendations on how to navigate those? I do. The way I think most women have been brought up to, um, you know, apply their makeup, you put on the liquid foundation or you put on the concealer, then you put on liquid foundation, then you have to set it with powder. I think um, that just adds cakiness and it also enhances any wrinkle wrinkles on our face. And it also, mm-hmm. it just ages us, right? So I am a fan of creams. I recommend, uh, as we age, creams are always beautiful. It's beautiful on any age skin, but creams have movement. Liquid foundations do not. When you put a liquid foundation on, it dries and it's there and it will not move. So if it's going to dry in the creases, you're going to see, you know, the creases all day. Whereas a cream, you can use a beauty blender or perfector sponge or just a brush and apply um, little dabbing motions over the areas that start to crease. And the, the cream almost softens those lines and kind of blurs it. So I am a big fan. If you feel like you have wrinkles, creams are always a good way to go. Um, And if you can avoid using powder, then that also will help because powder tends to age us as well. It makes our skin look dull and not as hydrated. Okay. That makes sense. You know, and it's funny because I think a lot of us, and this is true. I mean, this is true in fitness. This is true in, in food. A lot of us just go back to the things that we learned at the very beginning. And maybe, I mean, I don't know how how you feel about powders when we were 16 and really (laughs) hormonal and oily, and maybe that was great then, but maybe that's not so much now because our skin has, has changed so much that makes, yeah, that makes a lot of other sense. Um, anything else I missed on here in terms of like specific spots that people come to you and saying, I just don't know what to do about this. 
Yeah, actually. Um, so a lot of ladies voice their um, concerns about how when we age, our lips start to thin. They feel like when they put lip color on, their lips are somewhat lost and they, mm-hmm. they don't, they feel like they're actually applying the lip color on their face because they're, they're, lips have thinned. Um, There are ways of creating um, an illusion of a shadow um, around the lips to where it gives your lip a little bit of a fuller pout um, without looking overlined or, um, you know, like an eyesore. Uh, I recommend if your lips are thinning, you could use a contour shade or maybe a bronzer or even like an earth tone eyeshadow that's very neutral and concentrate that shadowing right under your bottom lip and where the fold of the lip is. And uh, you can even, if you feel like they're thinning on the outer part of the lips, you can shadow in on the outer uh, edges of the lip as well as the uh, Cupid's bow peaks. And um, just by soft, a very soft shadow, ladies, if you're listening, do not go <laughs> like this dark stuff under, under your lips, please. Because <laughs> I didn't tell you to do that. <laughs> I recommend just a very soft shadowing. Um, You know, contouring is important for um, just really just enhancing and chiseling out our face feature or facial features. So contouring your lips can definitely be done in a a controlled amount of shadowing. And um, it will save you lots of money from, uh, you know, having to go get lip injections. And it will definitely give you a little bit more confidence of putting on your lip color. Every That's day. great. <laughs> okay, talk to me talk, or talk to us a little bit about the contouring because this is new to me and it's really scary when you put this on and it's like this is a lot of darkness going on my the top of my forehead. But then it seems to work. So <laughs> if you have someone to help you through it, teach us about the contouring. Okay. So with contouring Again, I think a lot of ladies misunderstand, uh, have misunderstood what contour is versus bronzer. So contour is really meant to enhance the natural shadows of our face um, or to create an illusion of a shadow. Um, bronzer is meant to give us that bronzy glow. So back to contour. If you want to chisel out your cheekbones, then um, contouring is great for that because it can add or enhance that natural shadow that your face already has um, just by gently shadowing it in. It does not need to look like war, war paint. So again, contouring is, a, you know, just something that you can use lightly. Also, You know, I feel like as I tend to age, my forehead seems to keep getting bigger. And (laughs) and so I love you. And my nose. And and fun (laughs) fact, you know, your nose never stops growing. So I'm like, great. (laughs) (laughs) But um, with contouring, if you want to create, you know, a smaller forehead, uh, contour is great for that because you can apply the contour shades across the the upper part of the forehead along the hairline and blend that inward. And it it creates an illusion of a smaller forehead, just like uh, you can contour with your nose to create an illusion of a smaller, skinnier nose or a shorter nose. There's so many fun things you could do with makeup. It's just really understanding your face and your facial features and knowing what it is that you want to achieve. And I promise you, it's achievable. And contour, <laughs> thank goodness for contour, because it that's what help is a big help. Yeah, it is. It's it's definitely interesting to learn. You know, it's funny you say that. I've been, I guess I watched your videos wrong because I've been doing it up, but you're telling me I need to come down. <laughs> you know what? By the looks of it, it looks like you have nailed it. So I'm oh. really proud of you. <laughs> Whatever you're doing is right. There's really no right or wrong way with with the makeup that you're using. Um, it's just, um, achieving that end result that is your main goal. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's funny, there's so many parallels with what you're saying about makeup versus the things that I say with regard to taking care of ourselves and fitness and like, there's no right or wrong way. You just got to figure out what works for you and you have to know your face and you have to know your body. And so I'm I'm loving that even though this is meant to be just kind of a fun conversation, a lot of the things that you're saying are right in line with a lot of the the messages that I, that I try and get out there and that we have um, when we do talk about, you know, general health stuff, there are some trends out there 
right now that I think look really fantastic on some women and particularly the ones who are like in their twenties. And (laughs) I just am not sure that those are right for me. So (laughs) I'm wondering if there are some things out there that maybe we see, um, you know, on Instagram or we're, you know, we're seeing on Pinterest or, you know, whatever it is that maybe for women of a certain age, uh, I don't want to say is the wrong because there's no right or wrong, but, but maybe is we're not in the right season for that. I don't even know what the right way to say it is, but the, maybe, do you have any thoughts on that or am I just crazy? No, you're not crazy at all. Um, I do have thoughts on this. Um, of course, I always um, encourage any lady to, who loves makeup and really wants to, you know, be trendy and um, explore explore color. Uh, I say more power to you, rocket girl. Like you get out there and and rocket. But um, for an everyday person who doesn't really tend to, you know, want to explore that side of makeup, and they're confused on, well, should I or shouldn't I? Uh, this is for y'all. So the cat eye, fox eye, winged eye. Um, I think. This is a trend that has, it, it's beautiful on, but it can be a little extreme. So a fox eye, I'm not sure if all of you who are listening know what a fox eye is. I but don't. It's basically <laughs> like um, a winged out eye. <laughs> it's okay. It's a winged out eye on the outer corner of the eye, but then um, almost like a, uh, an enhanced liner that goes a little further down on the top inner corner of inner corner of the eye. So it goes downward and then the outer part of the eye goes upward. So, um, you know, rocking a fox eye uh, every day for women over 40 is just not something that, you know, is necessary. Um, and it can be avoidable. <laughs> I would just recommend <laughs> avoiding it if you're, if you're not, you know, wanting to explore your, your creativity with makeup. Um, another thing is the I don't know, y'all, this wet eyelid look, (laughs) a lot of ladies are putting lip gloss, like a clear gloss on their eyelids. And it it might be pretty for like editorial type makeup or like for a photo shoot. Um, But I wouldn't put any lip gloss on your eyes. I would avoid that as well. And then lastly, definitely the baking. I don't know if um, everyone knows what baking is, but in a nutshell- (laughs) <laughs> in a nutshell. So if you're on YouTube and you're like, you know, how do I do whatever X, Y, and Z with makeup? You will find a ton of videos of unnecessary steps of makeup that are just only going to break your bank and frustrate you and then enhance any eye wrinkle that you might have. And you just need to really toss it. So one is the HD powder with baking. A lot of ladies, um, tend to apply powder over their foundation, under their eye, and that pie piece shape I was speaking of earlier, and they let it sit on their face and bake on their face for about 15 minutes. And then they dust the excess um, powders off. So that's what they call baking because the natural um, temperature of our bodies is uh, a little bit warmer. So it's heating up the makeup, really just kind of like, baking the powder onto your skin. Uh, the reason why I say avoid this one, because again, it will, um, only enhance eye wrinkle. It's going to cake and clump throughout the day under the eye. And if it's an HD powder in any photo that is taken of you, you will look like a raccoon. Um, it reflects light. So it could be a camera flash or a strobe or any, any photo um, that is snapped of you with a, an HD powder um, creates a white hot spot. And that's not you cannot edit that. So, um, <laughs> so um, you know, it's unnecessary to do the baking. And if a winged eye is uh, not your thing, then don't stress about it because it's not necessary. And one more, as I'm speaking, I thought of one. Um, a lot of ladies ask about the, the eyeliner trend on the bottom lash line, if they're mm-hmm. supposed to do it or not. One fun tip I want to add to that is I recommend using an eyeshadow for your bottom lash line eyeliner um, versus a pencil or a liquid. 
Uh, this will help with, sm you know, any smudging and um, creasing throughout the day, but it really gives you a gentle illuminated glow to the eye. It makes your eye look finished and detailed without looking overly done. And whenever you are doing that, I recommend stopping maybe midway of the eye instead of going all the way in and tracing all the waterline all the way around your eye. It prevents it from uh, making your eye look small. So this opens the eye. It gives you um, a cleaner eye look, but it also details it out a little bit more so um, your eye doesn't feel as bare. Those are really good to know. It's so funny. I mean, I'm clearly very out of touch with a lot of the stuff. I'm like, baking? <laughs> What's baking? What's Fox? <laughs> but, but as you describe it, I'm like, Oh yeah, I have, I've seen that. I've seen that. So yeah. I, mm -hmm. I definitely know what you're talking about. Okay. So if someone was like, you know what, I just want, I just want to look good. I don't want to be out of style. I just kind of, you know, what would you recommend? Like what would be just a, a great starting point if someone was, is maybe wanting to revamp how they do it. Uh, I know that you do sell products and I have been, I mean, I will say for anyone who's listening, I, I totally switched over and I've been super happy with them. The other thing too, that you do is the, this oh. color match, because that's really intimidating for people like me and, you know, who just kind of really don't know, and I don't want to go too crazy. And you do this color match over like through pictures, which, so that's super cool. Cause like, you didn't have to come see me. I didn't, I mean, I would love to see you and have coffee with you or a glass of wine, but <laughs> we didn't have to take the time. So anyway, talk to us a little bit about like, how would someone go about just if they wanted to change some things, you know, maybe the, all of it or a little bit of it and uh, colors to focus on and, and general styles and all of that kind of stuff, which is, I know is a big, it's a big question, but I know you also know the answer to that. So I'll just let you go with it. No, I love big questions. It's great. I love all things makeup. So I'm happy to answer any question you have. Um, so I, first of all, recommend that the most important piece to really creating a flawless glow for you on an everyday regular basis is finding the perfect match foundation, a foundation that doesn't feel disgusting on your skin. It feels like not... Nothing that really makes you feel like you're wearing makeup. So get out there, try some products. Um, a lot of the, the makeup stores do offer, you know, um, sample sizes. So you're not wasting your money if you wanted to uh, try different products. But I recommend trying them first before really, you know, investing in a bottle of liquid foundation and not sure if you're going to like it. Finding the perfect match is super important. Then... I recommend having a, maybe, you know, a, a, a blush or cheek color that is something that is um, versatile. You could wear it for a night out or you could wear it during the day. And if you do not have time to put on um, eyeshadow, that it would actually look pretty dusted on the eyes as well. I'm all about versatility and minimizing the, the makeup bag. Um, I think what happens is we tend to waste so much time digging through a makeup bag that we get frustrated and we get overwhelmed. And so just simplifying your makeup routine um, by having products that you can use in multiple ways is a, a good place to start. And then once you become more confident in those areas, you can always, of course, add to the fun. And then as far as lip colors go, the same thing, just something that you uh, can amp up or just toss on. Having a few of those options are key. I do know that brows are always a, a trend that are changing. So, always. you know, I, I, always, right? And as a makeup artist, it's so funny because I always make sure I ask my clients, I'm like, okay, so... For your brows, do you want me to do something wild or are we just remaining true to the shape and tone? I am a firm believer in if you like your brows a certain way, then continue to wear them that way that you love to see yourself. But having a, a pencil or a, an eyeshadow um, that can fill in your brow or a contour that can fill in your brow, you're getting multiple uses out of that one product versus, you know, the eyebrow. Um, 
the uh, filler with the brush filler. and all yeah, that stuff you know that goes what with I mean? it. Like the shadow. Yeah. Things. I feel like sometimes those are, they're great, but they're also overly priced and you can only do one thing with it. <laughs> so just create versatility in your makeup bag and have fun with it. And it'll save you money and it saves you time. So the no makeup look, first of all, whenever you apply your foundation, you want to make sure, um, I always recommend priming your eyes too with it. Because if you think of an artist in a and a painter's palette, like they are canvas, they start with a blank canvas because there's no colors competing with other colors. So basically starting with a very clean canvas, um, which AKA is your face and uh, really tone, uh, neutralizing all the tones on the eyes, under the eyes um, is key. Um, that will help create a no makeup look because your face is now mimicking clear, flawless skin. Then adding on a little bit of dimension. So um, your blush, uh, you can even, if you want to, you know, venture out and try a contour, this really chisels out your features. Um, I always say, con we always say contour for the cheeks is like a push-up bra for your cheeks, you know, because you're adding <laughs> lift <laughs> to your face, which is um, something that makes you feel young and youthful again. And um, it makes you feel a little bit more confident in the world, Right. Um, eyeshadow tones, um, earth tones are always, you cannot go wrong with earth tones. Um, as I mentioned before, the transition color, something that's going to brighten your eye and, um, give you a more, uh, vibrant eye and to where it appears more awake is a fun way to cheat, uh, you know, a night of no sleep. <laughs> so <laughs> there are fun things you can do with makeup. Eyeshadow doesn't have to be complicated or um, you don't have to overthink it. If you just apply a tone to, you know, the outer part of the eye on the, the lid to crease area, you could get away with just wearing one color. And then Another thing that I feel a lot of women um, our age tend to fear because of a myth is steer clear of shimmers. I don't believe that myth. I think a soft shimmer looks fabulous on any age in a moderate amount applied to the lid properly. So um, glitters, maybe not so much. You know, glitters are different. They're, they're extremely loud and they're a little bit more pigmented. But don't fear a nice, pretty, soft shimmer on the center part of your lid. Um, you could even apply a little bit of that shimmer on uh, your, over your lip color to kind of illuminate your pout. And that's gorgeous. And depending on the tone of the shimmer, you can even uh, put it on your high brow bone or on your high cheekbone um, to act as an illuminated glow. So you can really have fun with it, even at our age without it being too extreme. <laughs> you are really good at multitasking your product. I mean, that you're saying all these things, it never would have occurred to me. I mean, I'm such a, I'm such a rule follower. Like if it says it's eyeshadow, it only goes on my eyes. And if it's, <laughs> if it says it's lip color, it only goes on my lips and I never, or, you know, or, or uh, cheeks <laughs> or vice versa. I mean, I never would have thought about using some of these, some of these um, products in different spaces from which the, they are labeled. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So I would love for, if people are listening to what you're saying and they're like, you know, I might be ready for the contouring or this, this cream. And I think what you mean, or the way that I'm interpreting it is like when you say a cream, more of like a, like a compressed cream, not a cream from a bottle. Uh, okay. is that, is that right? Okay. Um, yes. Tell everybody, you know, and I, and I want to say, Stephanie, I really appreciate you taking a very general approach to this. And, you know, I know you do sell a product um, that I think my community would really like to know, because this is what I want them to know. I worked with you a couple months ago and I bought two different foundations, right? Because you said two, and then a bronzer, a, 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 I'm sorry, a, a blush, or something for my cheeks and lips or wherever else I want to have it apparently and a contour and then four eyeshadows. And I went on vacation and I was like, this is the lightest makeup bag I have ever done because there was so much packed in there and I hardly had to bring anything. Um, so tell us a little bit about your product and how they can go about doing, getting that if they want to. Uh, because I think, you know, and again, what I love that you have said is, there's no one right product. This is something that you have found and that you really like, but go get the sample sizes. That's a great idea. Go to the makeup stores and and try those and see what works. Uh, but I do want to introduce people to this because I'd never heard of it. And I will tell you also, 
the first day I wore this, I put it on and I'm like, I really don't know. Really, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to try it anyway. <laughs> and I went to book club and the book club host was like, Amy, you're, all, you're looking all, what was the word? She not dewy, but like glowy. That was her word. She's okay. like, you're all glowy and you look, you know, everything looks really good on your face. I'm like, new makeup. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, all of that to say, uh, tell, tell everybody a little bit about, uh, about this. Absolutely. So I am in love, hands down in love with this product, uh, personally and professionally. Um, it is a product that's designed to create, to simplify your makeup routine, to lighten your makeup bag. Um, the versatility of it is, um, incredible. Um, everything, uh, except for most of our eyeshadows, um, but everything is, uh, cream based. And as I mentioned earlier, creams are just my favorite way to go when, um, achieving a flawless look for skin because cream mimics skin and the way our colors, uh, with, um, the company is Saint, Saint Beauty and it's S E I N T. <laughs> I know that's uh, a little confusing, with the products with Saint, they are um, geniusly designed to really combat blemishes or undertones that, you know, tend to pull blues and purples under the eyes. Um, everything is designed to work together. So um, I have like red splotchiness on my face and um, I have some sunspots um, underneath my makeup. But uh, it only requires two colors to achieve a flawless um, face that can combat my redness and my my sunspots and uh, give me that flawless glow. So instead of having to go out and buy concealers that are going to combat different tones on my face and then uh, a bottle of expensive makeup that will, you know, um, give me the coverage, I can use my, uh, we call them highlights, um, but they're act as our foundations. I can use my two foundation shades, um, that are only $14 each, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. All of our colors are only 14, but they work as a team to achieve that coverage that mimics skin. It really does achieve like a hydrated glow on the skin. It doesn't dull the skin. It doesn't look oily or greasy. Um, it really just illuminates your skin the way we all, you know, want our skin to look in person. Our contours uh, are, you know, I tend to match based off your hair color or your eyebrow color. Um, so you can use your contour. That's also $14 and pop that in a magnetic compact alongside your your foundations. And you can use that for your eyebrows. You can use it to chisel out your facial features. Um, and I'm not going to lie. I have used it a couple times uh, on some gray pieces of my hair, like right here. <laughs> I stippled <laughs> some of that on and it worked perfectly and it got me through the day and it camouflaged my grays. So there are a lot of ways you can use That's your contour. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, our cheek and lip colors, again, they're $14 and, um, you can use those, uh, like they're called cheek and lip. You can use them on both your cheeks and lips and yes, your eyes as well. So you can have your whole face in one magnetic compact. Some are very, like a single layer, some are double layer and, for less, maybe $56. If you're a minimalist and you want to keep it very basic, you could have a foundation, a contour, a cheek and lip, and a brightener, all for $56. And there's your whole face right there. And it and the colors last forever. Our eyeshadows are $12. Um, and honestly, it this makeup, the concept of it becomes addicting. You become obsessed with um, being a minimalist, but then uh, you obsess over its beauty and how beautiful it makes you feel and the confidence it gives you that you want to eventually add on to your palette. And I love having um, and giving my clients the ability to to explore that when they're ready. So there's really no right or wrong way to build your palette. But um, having an artist such as you know myself uh, would help guide you on finding that right tone for you and help answer any of your questions and needs that you might have um anytime <laughs> that was really helpful for me so i appreciate it i mean i sent you a couple pictures and then you sent back some recommendations which was really 
helpful for me because I didn't, I'm like, I don't really know where to, where to go. Um, two questions I ask all my guests. One is I'm fascinated by tattoos. I don't have any, but I found that people often have stories when they choose to put body permanent body art on their, on their bodies. So if you have any, would you be willing to share uh, what it is and where and what it means? Or if you don't have any, uh, if you had to get one, what would it go and, or what would it be and where would it go? Okay. So in a nutshell, the, the tattoo, to answer your tattoo question, um, I do not have any tattoos. I am a chicken of pain. So I, I opt out on that. And if I did have to get one, this is a really, really funny one. My husband has an ant. He, it was supposed to be a picnic ant on his foot tattooed on his foot and as a joke and it looks like a gigantic ant eater like it does not mimic <laughs> a picnic ant at all and so I always say if I am going to brave the storm of you know getting a tattoo I will definitely make sure it's three little tiny dots on my foot and then have a real picnic ant <laughs> sketch on my foot <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. fantastic that's fantastic <laughs> And then on a little bit more of a serious note, do you have a meaningful Bible verse that you would like to share with us? Uh, yes. So I um, feel like this Bible verse has been like a personal chant, um, but Philippians um, 4.13, um, I can mm-hmm. do all things through Christ who gives me strength. The little story behind that, my grandmother, before she passed away, um, had given me a bracelet and that was engraved on it. And, um, you know, I, I cherished it and appreciated it at the time, but, um, I noticed that, you know, through going through the journey of my life and, you know, my kid's diagnosis and moments that I felt like I was on the floor and couldn't stand back up, um, that, that verse just really stuck with me through it throughout all of it. And it helped me peel myself off the floor and be there when I needed to be there. And, um, you know, the good Lord above gave me the strength that I needed to succeed. You know, it's my chant through every day, honestly, even every day before I see a client, you know, um, sometimes the clients have a challenging story and I find some sort of strength and a piece of me that just wants to share my journey with them. And it's, it's just a beautiful, I don't know. It's just, it's my personal chant and it has a lot of meaning behind it. So yeah, I love that one. Well, thank you. Yeah, that is how special, what a special gift for your grandmother to give you to stick with you for so long. I love that. (laughs) Stephanie, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, you are right. It does create a little bit of an addictive nature. And I I actually am thinking I might go on and get a few more little eyeshadows here. So let it begin. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Amy. I appreciate it so much. I really encourage you to go check out Stephanie's Facebook group called Contour the World. I'll put a link in the show notes. Even if you don't uh, use the product that Stephanie sells or have any interest, she still has really great tutorials on there. And if you scroll down to late June, you can see some of just the incredible, amazing art she put on her face. She also has some of these on her Instagram page, which the links in the show notes as well. I mean, some of these, I couldn't even, I couldn't even do these with like a brush and a paper, let alone putting this on my face. I don't even know how she was able to do that. If you haven't yet signed up to be notified of when my new book, Your Worthy Body is released, please make sure you do that at yourworthybody.com. That's really helpful for me on the front end in preparation for launching. And remember when you do, I'll send you a printable 14-day health and body image devotional, my family's favorite breakfast recipes, and that five-minute wake up and warm up movement that you can do in your pajamas. I'm not in mine because that would be kind of weird but you can do it in yours. What's the one simple thing to remember? I try and do this in all of my episodes. And if you take nothing else from this, I want you to take this. Finding the right foundation really will cover a lot of bases as your skin gets older. And then keeping it simple for the rest of the colors that you put on your face by going with earth tones. Also, contouring your cheekbones is like a push-up bra for your cheeks. (laughs) I've never heard that before she said that. And I don't know that I can say that my cheeks look like they have a push-up bra on them, but I can definitely feel like they've got a little more definition. Okay, now I'm really self-conscious because you guys are going to be looking at me in these videos that I'm putting out. So 
just, you know, proceed with grace. Okay. All right, you guys, that is all for today. Go out there and have a graced day. <laughs>